everybody. We are back. It is part two with showrunner, writer, extraordinaire, producer, all the things, Mr. Peter Lankoff. Uh, Peter, man, it's been like forever, man. How are you? <laughs> Good. Good to see you again. Absolutely. Uh, we decided all wear the same clothes. Uh, right. We just we wanted to, we wanted to make sure everything you know was on track with as it was. Um, in part one, we talked a lot about uh, your early days as a father, um, the emotions of having children, um, that great story that I, I don't know how many people know about that, but the fact that you had a big scare with your twins who were premature born, um, good stuff. If you if you're interested in that, everybody. Go back to part one, watch that episode first, then come on back and join us for part two um, and check that out. Um, Nick. Yes. I, I'm going to give the conch to you because as per normal, it's all about me. Talk, 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 talk with Peter. And, and it's, it's your turn, my friend. Go, go, go do your thing. All right, man. I So when he said yes, I was like, I am so excited. You wrote two of my favorite movies of all time, Son-in-Law and Demolition Man. <laughs> man, Demolition That's Man. That's so funny. You know, they both came out the same year. Yeah, yeah. Thunder Law came out in May and Demolition Man came out in o October of 93. Um, yeah. Demolition yeah. Man was ago. so good, though, man. So good. I mean, like Wesley Snipes. Like, how I did love you... future time travel flicks. It's... So, did you? I, I got to know, did you have control over who you picked for the actors or was that like somebody else? Well, Joel, the uh, producer, Joel Silver, um, originally. Um, there were a lot of other actors. I, I I wrote a couple drafts with Steven Seagal, who at one time was going to play, um, you know, the lead. And then um, there was talk at one point about Mel Gibson and, and Schwarzenegger. Um, and then um, Joel called me one day and said, Stallone is interested. And so I used to go with Joel. Um, I used to drive over the Warner Brothers and then, Joel would drive, have his driver take us over to Stallone's office. And uh, I started doing some drafts for Stallone. And I knew that after about a year of working on it with him, that it was definitely going to be him. Mm -hmm. um, and then, um, uh, you know, Sandra Bullock was not originally um, in the movie. It was Lori Petty. Uh, she had done Tank Girl. Yeah. I, 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 yeah. So... Um, she, that was Sandra's uh, first role, was it not? Well, Sandra had just done a movie called Wrestling Ernest Hemingway for Warner Brothers. And they loved The Daily so much. They thought for sure she was going to be a star that when Lori Petty was let go, it was like two days after shooting, um, they brought um, Sandra Bullock in just based on The Dailies of Wrestling Ernest Hemingway. Hmm. I think that was, I, I think it was a great choice. I don't think anybody, like, I don't think anybody could have pulled it off but her like that, that role and i also don't think anybody even uh even had any clue how good she'd be so yeah and then snipes oh my gosh like you <laughs> only, only see snipes as a good guy and then all of a yeah. sudden he's this totally just evil bad guy and yeah. Dennis theory oh man so many yeah so many good choices in that movie yeah his hair choice was great because I don't know if you remember, but it inspired Dennis Rodman to get the same cut. Oh, yeah. yeah. The same right. dye job. Which yeah. was and that was also very big at that point in time in the 90s. Uh, you know, everyone going toehead and yeah. uh, everyone bleaching their hair. Um, mm -hmm. Let me tell you, though, it's not easy to do if you have thick hair. <laughs> and uh, that must have been some work uh, for them to get that right. <laughs> All right, Nick. So All more right. questions. Was that was yeah, that more so I'm, so I'm question? <laughs> Even though we asked before, I'm going to ask the seashells. What, how nobody's ever asked that before yeah but so if there were my understanding uh <laughs> demolition man there's a scene where stallone goes into the bathroom and there's seashells and he comes out and says what are the seashells for it's been a long-running question what in heck are the seashells for uh do we get that answer today from peter Lankoff? sure yeah i'll tell you <laughs> hello <laughs> That's amazing. Right? It's, it's amazing. almost like you've practiced oh. that. Yeah. So how cool is that, right? That's pretty amazing. Nobody would ever have thought that that's the way it works, but that's the way it works. No, truthfully, I honestly, I get asked that a lot, as you can imagine. But yeah. here's the thing. I think it's more interesting not knowing. Um, and I think that's sort of the fun of it. Like, you don't know what's in the briefcase in Pulp Fiction, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. 
you don't want to know what's in it. You want to imagine what's in it. Um, you know, you know that it's something that's projecting some kind of light. Um, I think that it's more interesting wondering what the three seashells do than knowing what the three seashells do. So I always tell people that I'll give that answer out on my deathbed. So um, yeah. I got to have something, some mystery uh, connected with me. Um, and that, I think that's it. So you oh. can confirm, though, that there is a definitive answer to that question. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Oh. So how did Taco Bell win the franchise wars? <laughs> well, originally it was Pizza Hut. And then, you know, look, when you get, uh, uh, um, you know, conglomerate like that behind a movie, uh, they're going to do a lot of the advertising. That's like early product placement. So originally right. it was Pizza Hut. But when they go out and, and sort of um, connect with, you know, different um, franchises, they're the ones that stepped up and were willing to do a significant amount of advertising. I don't know if you remember, but their takeout bags were demolition man, takeout yeah. bags, the cups, everything. Oh, so yeah. that's a significant, you know, piece of advertising that they came to the table with. So is that like something that's kind of gone away too? Like if you notice the movies in the nineties and early two thousand, there was a lot of McDonald's, Pizza Hut, Taco Bell getting behind different big movies. And it's kind of gone away. Like you don't, you don't really see. You don't have the Disney uh, ornaments anymore at, at McDonald's. You don't have the, the big movie yeah. anymore. I think there's some. You know, they do some of that. It's been replaced a lot with product placement, uh, where there's small, you know, uh, product placements in the movie and stuff. But I think, I don't know if there if there was a lot of return on that. You know, that's a big, massive mm -hmm. investment. To, to run commercials, to produce commercials in association with movies. Um, and I think that over time, they realize that what's, you know, are they getting the maximum amount of return? So um, I don't think, I think I, I agree that you haven't seen it a lot, but I think it's been replaced with smaller pieces of product placement. Um, you know, even on, on, on um, five O we, you know, we failed miserably doing a uh, subway uh, product placement, but um, but you still see them smaller uh, um, embed, you know, embedded uh, commercials in movies and, and TV, um, but nothing like well, what they did with Demolition Man or what you've seen with Star Wars or some of the bigger right. films. What TV shows and or movies influenced and inspired you? growing up as a kid to uh, embark in this career of yours? I, 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 I have always said that Magnum P.I. was my favorite show growing up. Hawaii Five-0 was my dad's favorite show. Magnum was my favorite show. And there was an episode, Have You Seen the Sunrise, where, you know, Magnum actually shot his arch nemesis in cold blood. And the last couple frames was Magnum aiming his gun and, you know, this, you know, uh, this nemesis, Ivan, um, was taunting him, saying, you know, you're not going to kill me in cold blood. And he went back to Tom Selleck and he pulled the trigger and it went to black. Um, and you realize that the hero killed somebody in cold blood. Now, even though Ivan deserved it and, and um, you know, it sort of made sense for him to do it, I was like so shocked. And it sat with me for so many days after that, that I thought I want to do that. I want to like impact somebody the same way. Um, I always wanted to be a writer. I wasn't sure what kind of writing, you know, because I, I used to write poetry and, and plays. But I think watching that episode really sort of um, steered me in the direction of writing for the screen um, and trying to recreate that moment that affected me so much it's amazing and look at you now yeah. man writing magnum <laughs> pi exactly. which by the way the brand new season just dropped literally last week two weeks ago episode one right yeah yeah we had uh we had a uh, zach, zach 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 knighton on we have steven on here in a couple weeks oh you uh, do got, That's yeah great. Steven's oh yeah this saturday. saturday we actually <laughs> yeah. we booked him an hour or so before you came on yeah Steve is um, Steve is the heart and soul of that show. Zach is 
insanely talented. You know, it's funny about Zach because um, I wish Zach was my idea. That Zach was um, brought, his name was brought to the table by another producer on the show. Um, and uh, he's, both those guys have been such godsends to the, the franchise because they're super talented, but better, they're great people. Um, yeah. You know, and they are really great ambassadors of the show. Um, Cause when you live in Hawaii and you shoot a show in Hawaii, a lot of times all you want to do, especially working those long hours is you want to go home. Um, and those guys go out of their way to participate and be a part of the fabric of Honolulu and, and Oahu and, be a part of the community and give back. Um, I always used to say when we were doing the show is I wanted to leave a good footprint behind. And those guys uh, are definitely doing that in a big way. I yeah, feel like I are. just did an advertisement for them, but, yeah. <laughs> but they're really and there's still, our clip. <laughs> yeah. It's here's the thing. And I think why I'm saying that is it's rare uh, to get to work with, talent that's also such great you know they're such good good people um it's rare so uh i um i was very blessed uh having met those two yeah we've met a lot of people doing the podcast and zach is hands down one of the nicest guys i've met doing this so far and i still talk to him even after doing the podcast with him and steven seems to be just the same so yeah, yeah, good stuff. Real good, good, solid people. Yeah. Uh, so next yeah, time, now, now we need Jay <laughs> to come on the podcast. We'll get him, man. Don't you worry. <laughs> next time I'm in Hawaii. In fact, uh, I, I'm I'm holding Zach. I brought up fish tacos. I'm a fish taco aficionado, and uh, I, I last time I was in Hawaii, I was brought up to him that there's a lack of a good fish taco anywhere in Oahu, and. He, I, I circled that island multiple times, couldn't find anything. And he said, Hey man, next time you're out, I'm taking you to a spot. I know. And if not, we will catch them and cook them ourselves. And I'm going to hold them to it. That's, that's good stuff. I mean, that just shows you right there. And he was genuine. He was sincere. Yeah. Um, he, we'll he, see he, how he genuine is. and sincere he is. If I actually call him on it and I show up, <laughs> but I, I believe it'll happen. I'm sure it will. He's that kind of guy. Yes. So, all right. I'm sure this is a question you get a lot uh, in your career. What do you have coming up that no one knows about yet that you're willing to share with us today? Anything? Anything juicy? Uh, is this Mike going to come out just again? Wrote, well, you know, uh, we're in the middle of casting a movie. Uh, Joel Surnow, uh was a big mentor of mine. Uh, I worked with him on 24 and La Femme Nikita. Uh, he wrote a script, uh, a thriller. Uh, we're in the middle of casting that. Uh, that hasn't been announced. Um, I shot a movie last year in Thailand, so we're going to shoot this one in Thailand also with the same crew. Great, great group of of, of folks there. Um, I did write a movie. Um, I just finished a movie for Sony, a Western, based on two very iconic characters. I can't tell you what it is yet, but it's for a massive director. Um, and uh, it's, for me, it was the most challenging, the most rewarding uh, project I ever got involved with. Um, and and after all these years, and I've been doing it a long time. I think I got it in the Guild in 88, mm -hmm. the Writers Guild. It's the most fun I've ever had on a project. And uh, I just turned it in. Um, it's massive, um, and I'm excited about that. And has it been shot when, yet? When they let me, no, it hasn't been shot yet. We ju I just turned it in the script, but oh. um, as soon as I they let me tell you what it is, it's it's uh, it, it'll put a smile on your face because it's a uh, it's two very iconic characters teamed up in a western. So can you tell us where you in your head you envision the location of filming is going to be for this project? Well, I hope I hope the American American West. I, uh, I'm hoping that we pretty shoot vague. It here. Okay, well, that they, was me. I'm dishing. hoping we shoot it here, but I don't know. You know, nowadays, I mean, we shot the, the Western prequel to R.I.P.D. Uh, in Budapest, so right. uh, anything <laughs> could happen. All right, all right. Oh, Nick. Okay, I'm not going to press anymore. Uh, that is good stuff. Um, here's <laughs> a good question. Fast five. 
Um, yeah, in one sec. Um, okay. What is, if there is any, a project that you had your hands on or you had a piece of that didn't you ended up not getting that you wish you had? Is there such a thing? Well, there's a, there's a couple. I mean, I a couple of years ago, I was developing Miami Vice. Uh, we were talking to Don Johnson about coming back as Sonny Crockett, um, being a mentor to these younger um cops on the vice team right um and uh that deal fell apart that was uh it was very complicated but i was excited about that um i had um also done and now when i say the name of the property uh you can't think about the old version of it you got to think of what it it could have been uh with um the sort of five boat sensibility I had done for CBS, a uh, reboot of Baywatch, but it was very much uh, an edgier, uh, I think more action packed version. It was no slow motion runs on the beach. Right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, there was none of that. I mean, it was a um, very sort of honest and real look at uh, life saving uh on the beaches of Hawaii. Um, and I was really excited about that. We had a great director attached and uh, we ended up, we couldn't um, just couldn't launch it. There was too many partners involved um, and it was too complicated. But the thing that I, I keep chasing is I want to do a Felix lighter uh, series. Um, you know who Felix lighter is. So that's the, uh, CIA agent who's always worked with James Bond. Okay. So yeah, if yeah, you yeah, think yeah. about Felix Leiter, he's sort of like the American James Bond. Uh, so I've talked to Barbara Broccoli about tr begging her to allow me to do a series based on Felix Leiter. And in this version of it, James Bond would be on the periphery of the storytelling. You right. would know that a guy named James Bond exists. He works out of London. You know that he knows Felix Leiter. But the show would center on um, the adventures of Felix Leiter and uh, a CIA, American CIA agent who travels around the world doing very sort of Bond-esque type of adventures. That's awesome. Now, in your vision, would you uh, recast the character or use the same one? Because, you know, he passed, he died in, you know, the most recent yeah, one. Yeah, no, I, reca I recast it. That's I would make a, it a streaming version of... of uh, of it and I'd recast it, but, um, but yeah, that's to me, the one that it, uh, keeps getting away that I have on the line, but I just can't reel it in. So I'd watch the hell out of that. And I think it's a great me idea. Too. <laughs> Whoever needs to do this to make this happen. Let's get it done. Yeah. I, uh, I think Netflix could use a son-in-law TV show. <laughs> it's like an eight episode, kind of like the ranch. I don't know. Well, Paulie's always wanted to do, uh, I would own too. <laughs> where he's the father and yeah. his daughter brings home somebody even crazier than Paul, somebody that Paulie can't even wrap his head around. So I always that thought that's crazy. a funny, you know, funny way to tell that story. Yeah. I know. Hmm. I don't know if you, are you I, but we need an, an, a sequel to Encino Man too. Yes. That would be. <laughs> I think with Brendan Frazier's coming back and getting back into it. Uh -huh. it yeah. Wow. All right, it's amazing because Fra he's amazing and such a talent. He actually did a cameo in Son of Law. He was such a nice guy. Um, and it's so good to see him having this yeah. success now. Yeah, that is such a great story, especially all yeah. that man's been through. And yeah. it's just, I am so so happy for that man, Brendan. We'd love to have you on. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Okay, 100%. uh, Nick, you got a fast five for us. I do. I Peter, this is switches. this is a uh. I, if you haven't realized from my voice, um, I've worked radio most of my career. And uh, this is a quick little segment that I used to do in the radio that we have incorporated here on the podcast. Five quick questions. Uh, they're pretty basic, but they're fun. Let's go. All right. Well, who's your favorite actor to work with? Ooh, that, that's like, a, you can't do that to him, man. <laughs> no, but, but I'll, I'll tell you uh, uh, an actor I miss working with was Gary Sinise. I He Ooh. was uh, a, a, a real standout character. Uh, person and uh, great talent it still is yeah. yeah all right your favorite food to cook for your kids 
if and when you ever do. Uh, favorite food to cook for my kids? Pancakes, for sure. They yes. love my pancakes. What is your funniest parenting fail? Oh, God. <laughs> uh, probably having to talk with my uh, oldest son. Ooh. How, how'd that go? How, how yeah. old were, was he when you had the talk? It was a couple of years ago. Okay. Yeah. I think he was schooling me on some stuff. <laughs> I hate it when that happens. Yeah. <laughs> it, that's, a t that's a tough one. Uh, and every yeah. time I want to talk to my 14 year old, he's like, there's no way we're having that conversation, dad. So, yeah. <laughs> um, what's your, your best parenting accomplishment? My best parenting accomplishment. Uh, I would say my kids, uh, not being affected by, uh, uh, money, their, their, uh, interest in charity, uh, their good hearts, uh, the fact that they uh, um, don't need much to be happy. Uh, a lot of that is my wife's uh, influence because I'm a collector of things uh, and she's not. But they're very simple, big hearted kids. I think that's if I have to say that the thing I'm proudest about is the fact that they would rather. And I this probably sounds cliche, but they'd rather give than take. Uh, and that's huge because I wasn't like that as a kid. I grew up very poor and I wanted everything. Uh, and they're the opposite of that. That's awesome. Well done. Yeah. Um, if you could have a billboard with anything on it, what would it be and why? <sighs> wow. What a great question. If I had a billboard that, I can't, uh, <sighs> I think I think it would be tell the truth. I find that I I live in a in a world where um it's easy for people to lie. It's easy for people not to be truthful. Um uh and that's the thing I hate most about uh, uh the business. Um is there's not a lot of truth in it and um and I think I probably want that is just always tell the truth. I tell my kids all the time. It's, you know, just tell the truth and suffer the consequences. What's yeah, the worst? It's a tough that one, isn't it? Yeah. It's, it's a like, tough one. Be, be honest, you know, um, especially if you make a mistake, but I, I, I'd, I'd like people to be more truthful. Um, and if somehow that could be articulated in a billboard, um, that would be great. There you have it. All right. I want to add a couple. I always do. Uh, Peter Lenkoff, you, can produce a show a movie whatever anything that is in your realm of, of what you do with any actor or actress living or dead who you haven't previously worked with who's it going to be steve mcqueen bam didn't even need to think about it no All no right. for sure that's yeah uh yeah i'd love to have done something with him uh his interests are very similar to mine like i love anything mechanical I'm a big car guy, big anything that, that has wheels and an engine. I would have loved to have like hung out and learned and enjoyed, you know, that sort of hobby of his. What's the most, your favorite car you've ever owned? Uh, my uh, Mercedes-Benz 300 SL uh, Gullwing. Ooh, nice. Well, what's currently parked in your garage? Uh, a 1958 Speedster. Oof, man. How do you feel about Tesla and electric vehicles? My, here's the thing. My son has one. Uh, he, uh, he and my younger son will not drive anything or go in a, any car that has fuel, that takes fuel. They're all about the uh, environment. They're all about the electronic age. And, uh, and um, that's pretty cool. Uh, but uh I think they're great cars, uh, but I'm not an electric person myself. So gotcha. I, I'm a big car guy too, and I will never not, you know, have a passion for something that growls and yeah. has a big loud motor. But I have owned a couple Teslas in my time here, and I got to tell you, man, it's the coolest, most fun car I've ever owned that doesn't make noise, and it it 
I don't know. It's just, it's a game changer in my opinion. And I'm not even Mr. Environmental. I'm just, I like things that go fast and yeah. uh, that's where it got for me. So, but I still, man, you know, I'll have both. Yeah, they I, seem, to the day I die, I'm not gonna, you know, I, I love the classics. Yeah. They seem, they seem like great cars. My son loves his. I've been in it a few times. Um, they're amazing. It's just, I, you know, I like, I like You're old school, man. Gears. I like shifting gears and I like the smell of fuel and I don't know. I'm sure that'll pass. <laughs> nah, <laughs> don't worry. It won't pass. It's it's <laughs> engraved in our nature, man. I get it. Okay. I was driving this morning. I was driving a 1949 Farmall uh, tractor. Yeah. I had the most I, I had a big grin on my face because I like I like the old school, you know, mechanics. So simpler time too. Yeah. I mean, you could I mean, yeah. I mean, any of there's no electronics, no computers. It's just there and easy. I wouldn't even know what to look for if I was under the hood. I just, I, I just don't know, like what to do. So yeah, I well, think that's, that's right. intimidating, very intimidating, also. So well, if you pop the hood on a Tesla, there's nothing there anyway. So it ain't no big deal. <laughs> All right, Peter. The most important question I like to think I ask on this show, I'm about to give to you. Um, it's actually, you know what? I take that back. Peter's gonna get. The question, Nick, because I haven't asked it in a while. Um, this okay. is a question I've asked uh, a few guests, and over the years, especially in radio, um, it's a it's a simple thing, but it was profoundly answered um, by George Thorogood for the first time of all people. Um, that I thought it was just the best answer I ever heard. It took twenty years before anyone ma matched it, so no pressure. And then, not too long ago, we got pretty close to the same answer two times in a row with two guests. I'm gonna see what you do, so no pressure. All okay. right. You can. <laughs> what's one thing you can't leave your home without? <laughs> I know what you're thinking. Look, I know everybody's going to say cell phone. Of uh -huh. course. I, that's right. Yeah, that's obvious. Uh, I can't leave my house with, you know, my. You know, just practically, I'd say I can't leave without my glasses because uh, I need my glasses to drive. But I would say peace of mind. Uh, and I think because, you know, my mom used to I remember when I was a kid, my mom used to always walk out. And she used to check the stove a thousand times. She would hold lock the door, but check the lock. So I have that same sort of mentality where I don't have to walk around and check the stove, but I need to feel like everything's okay. I could leave without thinking about anything that's going on. So I would say that uh, cerebrally, uh, peace of mind. Love it. That is original. That is a first. So you now, sir, are in the very, very small <laughs> list of most unique and amazing answers. Now, the answer to the question that I was referring to that I got from George Thorogood, are you ready? It's simple. What's one thing you cannot leave the house without? His answer, kissing his wife. And I just uh, went, gosh, that's, wow. You know, that's great. But the, the truth is, is my wife drives the kids uh, to school in the morning. She drives my youngest to school in the morning. So she has to kiss me before she leaves. <laughs> well, there you so, go. Yeah. Again, the question's going to be different for everyone, but yeah. yours was profound. I like it. I like it. Like I said, that's that's now you're in the top three. Well, that's a connected to my mom and OCD. So that's, <laughs> that's okay. But, you know, it's peace of mind. All right. And the final question for you, Mr. Peter Lenkoff, is, and this is the important one, if there's one piece of advice that you could give to any new father or soon-to-be father, What's that advice going to be? Just know that they hear and see everything. Even if you don't think that they hear you or see you, they pick up on everything. I learned that there's so many things that my kids do um, that I didn't realize that they even saw me uh, you know, handle a situation a certain way. But they they observe everything. Um, so just know in the back of your head that, you know, however you react to a situation, they're paying attention. Um, and everything you do uh, uh, is going to sort of shape them uh, and shape their identities. Um, 
I didn't think it was possible, but I realized that they, I'm going to tell you a story. Okay. Can I tell you a story? Yes, please. That's amazing. It's an amazing story. So a few years ago, um, uh, I, uh, I had uh, somebody who, an actor who worked on my show, uh, who, uh, I didn't want him to wear shorts. Believe it or not, I didn't want him to wear shorts in a scene. So he got offended and thought that I didn't like his legs. Okay. So he went to the network and complained. And I had a big issue with the network, big falling out with the network. And um, my, and in the train, then I ended up losing a deal at the network, a big deal, like a big deal over something that was so small, but it sounded like body shaming. Right. So, and you know, in this world, you can't do anything like that. So I knew that it was going to be in the trades, this story, that it was going to be news. So um, I, and I didn't realize how big a story it was going to be, but it became a big story. And my wife went up to tell my kids, just so you know, uh, this is going to be out there because they follow, you know, they have my, they follow me on Google and all this stuff. So my wife started saying, well, look, you're going to hear this thing. Uh, and my son, Sam, this is a few years ago. He was 14, maybe 13. He stopped my wife and said, mom, you don't have to tell me. I know who my dad is. And that really was, a moment where I realized that if I took a phone call at home, if I had a meeting at home, they would see the way I'd interact with people. They would see the way I treated people. They knew who I was. So they knew that anything that um, may have been misconstrued or may have, you know, been a, a, a uh, wasn't how they saw their dad. So I realized that they saw everything, that they watched and learned everything uh, from me, even though I didn't realize that they were paying attention. Yeah. Uh, and that moment made me really realize that um, you got to you got to make sure you're always setting an example. Um, so that's why I'd answer that. And now I know this is a long answer to uh, what no, should be a very fine. simple uh, uh, a very simple question. It should be a simple answer, but knowing that your kids are always paying attention. There you go. And to be perfectly honest with you, Peter, um, I did my little deep dive on you prior to you coming on the show. And unfortunately that is still pretty much all you read about, right? You know, the first 10 yeah. things about Peter Lankoff. Um, I purposely did not bring it up because you know, I'm, it, I didn't need to, didn't want to, this is about being dads and whatnot, um, right. but you brought it up in, in I'm really glad you did. And that explanation right there was just, it was very profound. So well done. Good stuff. That's a very good answer, in my opinion. Well, also, thank you. And I held, you know, and, and you right. if there was any truth to what happened, I'm sure some of the other people we've had on the podcast would have said, hey, be careful. Or you probably wouldn't be working with Magnum PI. You probably oh, sorry, wouldn't be doing that. What was that again? I, I think if there's any truth as to like what happened, you probably some of the people we've had on the podcast probably would have warned us. And oh there, yeah, and there and there you probably wouldn't be doing what you're doing in the industry. Yeah. Like you're still working. You're still doing amazing things. Yeah. Well, I think people understand that we're living in a very sensitive time right now, yeah. and that people's uh, feelings uh, come first, and you know people the microaggressions are really um, a big deal to people. And uh, look, I, I'm a, I was a tough boss, you know, uh, but that's all, you know, trying to get the best out of people. Um, but, uh, but at the end of the day, I don't care about that. I care what my good friends, what my family thinks. Uh, and that's really what's important at the end of the day. Uh, you know, I had 900 people working for me and 13 people had an issue. Uh, that's pretty good. Uh, I'd I say think. the percentage uh, on that works in so, your favor. Yes. Yeah. So and also, uh, you know, most people realize that there's a lot of, you know, BS out there. 
And I think that's why I said truth, because a lot of people don't tell the truth. Um, they do whatever they can to sort of like cement their position and stuff. So, uh, but I don't want to tell, you know, that's yeah. not to talk about this. Um, but I don't shy away from it. You know, if anybody asks me, I tell the, you know, yeah. you know, everything that went on, you know, I just think that my kids knowing who their dad is and not being swayed by, you know, by something that's written in a, a, a tr you know, in the trades or somewhere. Yeah. I think and that's really important. That, that, that to me is, uh, shows me that I did a good job parenting. I agree. And I, and when you told that story, um, it, it could have ended right there when your son's saying, mom, I know who my dad is. I don't need to worry about and that's just heart blew up out of chest. Uh, yeah, I, I was bawling by the way. Was, when, I, yeah. when I saw that I was bawling, uh, cause I, I just thought like, holy shit, everything I had done, uh, like was, was a success because my kids saw me like saw the truth, you know, they saw, they, they knew me as a, you know, mild tempered person and, uh, they weren't going to believe anything that, uh, was out there. And I thought, wow, like, you know, I'm glad I discovered the fact that, you know, they see and hear everything. Good stuff. Um, I wish I knew that before though, you know, that's great advice to give to other people. Yeah. Well, at least you did get to hear it and you do know. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, he is Mr. Peter Lankoff, showrunner, writer, producer, extraordinaire. Um, you are writing currently right now for Magnum, yes? Not, no, I'm not writing for Magnum right now. I'm writing for I'm writing for other studios. Okay. Well, you can catch him on those other studios for writing. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I want to thank you so very much for your time today, good sir. Um, I will ask you one final question. I keep saying I'm going to ask a final question, but this is a simple, easy one. Okay. We do have now, obviously, with time um, allowing and you wanting to, we do a Father's Day episode every single year. We record it a couple of weeks prior to Father's Day. We get about 30 or 40 of these squares up on a Zoom call with as many of the previous guests we've had on from the last year um, on to do the show with us. If that's something you'd be interested in, I would love for you to be a part of that, obviously with time allowing is that something you may be interested in sure yeah absolutely sure. it's really yeah. cool to hang out and see all these other dads that we've been on and uh you know i wouldn't i wouldn't doubt if you know some of these actors that we've had on the past would be like hey peter you know psst, give me a call but anyway that's neither here <laughs> nor there we'd love to have you on i'll have nick arrange that um, right. a date and it's see if it can happen that's coming up in like a month or two it is brother <laughs> you better get on yeah. that Start wow. scheduling that. Yeah. Um, to everyone watching worldwide, wherever you may be, however you may be listening or watching, thank you so much for uh, checking out DadCast Podcast and this episode with Mr. Peter Lankoff. We appreciate you. We love you. We cannot express how much we uh, thank you for your support. And speaking of which, if you haven't done so already, like up, subscribe, comment, do all the things, and we'll catch you on the very next episode of DadCast. Thanks, and have a great rest of your day. Peter, you as well, man. Thank you so much, and have a great rest of your day. Thank you. You guys are great. Thank you. Thank you.